ever wish you could like read your audience's minds? Okay. <laughs> Maybe not literally. Right. But wouldn't it be amazing to know what they're really thinking about your work? Like that's the dream, right? Absolutely. Well, today we're diving into a whole stack of articles all about something that can actually help with that. Simple polls. Yeah. And as simple as they seem, polls can be these like surprisingly powerful tools. I bet. It's like you're you're leaving a trail of breadcrumbs for your audience, inviting them to kind of tell you what they want, what they need, what makes them tick. Ooh, I love that analogy. And this article, How Simple Polls Can Help You Attract More Clients, dives right into that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just about getting people to click. It's about building something much deeper. You know, it's about building trust and showing them that you actually care about what they think. I mean, think about it. When you ask for someone's opinion, you're basically saying, I value your perspective. Right. Right. And I feel like that's huge in a world where everyone's just vying for attention. For sure. That, so it's like you're inviting them to be part of the conversation. Exactly. Rather than just like talking at them. Which yeah, nobody wants No that. one wants to feel like they're on the receiving end of a lecture. Nobody. And you know what happens when people feel heard? They're more likely to stick around. They're more likely to engage with your content. Right. They feel seen. And then ultimately, they become loyal clients or customers. Okay. So we've covered like the why polls matter, but... How do you actually use them? Yeah. Because like anyone can throw a poll up on social media. Yeah, that's true. But how do you actually make sure it's effective? It all starts with asking the right questions. Okay. And what I mean by that is get specific. Okay. Don't just be like, do you like this product, right? Try something like, what's your biggest challenge with your topic? Ooh, I like that. You see the difference. It's like instead of fishing with like a generic lure, you're using bait that's specifically designed to attract the exact kind of fish you want. Exactly. And you know what else? A question like that, that gives you like direct insight into what your audience is struggling with. You're handing them the mic and saying, tell me what you need help with. And so then this article had this whole section on turning that raw data, like what people say, into something actionable. Yes. So it's one thing to know that people are struggling with, say, time management. But then what do you do with that information? Well, that's where the real magic happens. So imagine like you're a business coach. Okay. And you find out that a lot of your audience is struggling with time management. They can't get it together. Right. So what can you do? Well, you could create a webinar, right? Specifically about productivity hacks for entrepreneurs. Okay. Or maybe you partner up with a productivity app and you offer like a discounted bundle to your audience. Oh, aren't I? Right. So suddenly you're not just giving them information, you're giving them solutions. Right. Which is huge. It's like you're using those poll insights to create like a roadmap for your business. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be this big complicated thing. Even making small tweaks based on what you learn from those polls, I mean, that can make a huge difference. Totally. You know, say you're a food blogger, let's say, but, and you uh, do a poll and you find out that a lot of your audience, they're really craving more plant-based recipes. Interesting. Boom, there you go. You've got your content calendar planned out for the next month, at least. That's easy. It's not enough to just collect all the data, yeah. right? You have to know what to do with it. It's like having all this treasure, like a big chest full of gold coins. Right. But you don't actually know how to spend them. Right. So like analyzing your poll results, it's about like figuring out those patterns and seeing the trends. And that can really like inform your strategy, you know? Okay, so what does analyzing actually look like, though? Are we talking spreadsheets and algorithms and all that? Not necessarily. Like, it really can be as simple as just looking for the common things in people's answers. Okay. Like, what are they saying over and over again? Are there any pain points you keep seeing pop up? Or are there any results that kind of surprised you? Yeah. Like, maybe things that challenge your assumptions. Right. Like, huh, I didn't realize that. Right. So it's about, like, looking for the story behind the numbers. Right. Y yes. A hundred percent. Like, for example, imagine you're a graphic designer, right? Okay. And you've always, like, focused on social media graphics. Mm -hmm. So you run a poll just to see what's up. And you are shocked to discover that a good chunk of your audience, they actually want website design. Right. Like, that's a big deal. Yeah, that's like a light bulb moment. Totally. So now, instead of just being like, well, that's interesting, you could actually do something about it. You could start offering website design service. Maybe uh, you partner up with a web developer yeah. or you take a few online courses, like broaden that skill set a little, right? Uh, yeah. So it's about being what we call agile, you know, like being able to adjust to what your audience is telling you. Right. 
Right. And those polls, those give you the feedback like in real time so you can stay ahead of the curve. Right. Now, this article also mentioned something else that I think is really important. Yeah. It's how you actually present your polls. Ooh, yeah. Because think about it. A boring poll, that's a poll that people are just going to scroll right past. Right. It's got to be interesting. Exactly. Think of your poll like almost like it's a mini marketing campaign. Ooh, oh, yeah. that It needs to be eye-catching and engaging. Okay. Use bright colors, you know? Okay. Make sure the font is clear and easy to read. Maybe even add an image or a GIF to make it pop a little bit. Right. It's like anything else online, you've got to stand out. Exactly. Because people are scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. You right. Know? right. Yeah. And keep it short, too. Concise. Oh. No one wants to read this, like, novel of a poll, right? Right. Yeah. Stick to just a few really well-crafted questions, yeah, yeah. questions that are easy to understand, quick to answer. So quality over quantity when yeah. it comes to poll questions. 100%. Oh. Oh. And you know what else? Don't forget about emojis. Oh, yeah. People love emojis. Right. A well-placed emoji can really grab someone's attention, yeah. you know? It's all about making it really easy for people to just, like, quickly participate. Yes. Like, exactly. Yeah. You want to reduce that, what we call friction, right? Friction. Okay. If it takes someone, like... Five clicks to answer one simple question. Right. It's too much. They're going to lose interest. Right. Okay. So we've covered how it looks. Yeah. But what about what the poll actually says? Mm -hmm. Any tips on writing those really attention grabbing questions? <laughs> yeah. It's like but... you've got to make it catchy, right? Exactly. <laughs> this is where you can get a little creative, uh -huh. you know? Okay. Like instead of just being like, what kind of content do you want more of? Right. Try something like, if you could wave a magic wand and get more of one thing from us, what would it be? Ooh, I like that. It's still like getting the same information, but it's way more fun. Right. It's okay. engaging. And when something's fun, people are more likely to actually do it. And then you get more responses. Totally, totally. It's a win-win. Makes sense. Now, another thing I wanted to mention that this article touched on yeah. was adding a time limit to your polls. Oh, interesting. Have you ever noticed how when something's only available for a limited time? Oh, yeah. It's like suddenly you're way more interested. Yeah, for sure. Like that fear of missing out, that FOMO kicks in. It's exactly. But I'm like way more likely to buy those shoes. Exactly. It's the same thing with polls. Oh, that's so interesting. When you set a deadline, it just creates this like urgency oh. and people are like, oh, I got to get in on this before it's gone. It's like a countdown timer on a sale. Exactly. And the great thing is you usually get more people participating. Yeah, right. Because they don't want to miss out. OK, so before we wrap up, I wanted to circle back to something we kind of touched on earlier. Okay. We've talked a lot about using polls to like gather information, oh, yeah. get those insights. Right. But what about actually doing something with those insights? How do we make sure this isn't just some like data gathering exercise? Right, because you know? what's the point of all this if you're not going to use it? Right? Exactly. So like, yeah. what can we actually do? Yeah. How do we avoid that trap of like data for data's sake? Well, I think the biggest thing is to go into it with a plan. Okay. Like, what do you actually want to get out of this poll? So don't just like throw a poll out there into the void. Exactly. Have a goal in mind. Okay. And then once you have the results, that's when you really dig in, look for those like golden nuggets of information. Yeah. What surprised you? Did anything challenge what you thought you knew? Right. Or like confirm something that you weren't really sure about. Exactly. And then based on all of that, you decide what you're going to do. Right. Maybe it's like we said, adjusting your content calendar. Okay. Maybe it's launching a whole new product or service. Well. Yeah. Maybe you even, like, totally change your business model. Ooh, interesting. You know? It's really about using those poll results to guide you, make sure you're on the right track. So it's almost like a compass, those poll results guiding you towards what your audience actually wants. Exactly. And that's how you turn something as simple as a poll into this, like, really powerful tool. It's amazing what you can learn from just asking a few simple questions.